Ladies, gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to round five of the DTM Esports Pro Series 2024. My name is Luke Crane. I'll be one of your commentators slash hosts today, and I'm joined by Connery Maddock. How you doing, Connery? You all good? Yep, I'm doing all good as well. We are getting into the latter point of this season now. We are just a couple of events away from eventually carrying a champion in this one, which, which feels very weird. It feels like it started just yesterday, but we're already getting towards the end. I guess time flies when you're having fun, right? Yeah, 100%. Tim Yashu leads the championship. He needs to have a 68-point advantage going into the final rounds of races, which happens next week, and, and he will be your champion today. But he needs to gain 21 points for that to be the case over Nikodem Wisniewski, Jeffrey Rietveld, Kevin Siggy uh, as the likes. Right, you may be at home wondering what the hell is going on here. What cars are they using? Well, DTM 2023 cars that we're using today are actually in a race room. But let's check out a little video package to show what you can go and buy on race room today. So you can head into the game right now, hit the store, and you can buy yourself the DTM pack for 2023. Right, let's talk about the championship so far. We did just allude to it slightly there, that Tim Yarshall has been the dominant force, Connery. Uh, we do have Nikodem Wisniewski, who is still within uh, a chance of, of winning this. And, of course, Jeffrey Rietveld. So that is your top three. It is very, very close. And then Kevin Siggy with a, an outside chance of maybe getting himself in. What do P2, P3, and P4 in this championship have to do today to really keep this alive to next week? hope and pray that Tim Yarshall has an awful one. Uh, I, I think, you know, putting it bluntly like that is uh, is probably the most realistic situation. Uh, the only thing that's in their hands is finishing as best as possible, right? But, you know, even if Tim Yarshall finishes P2, P3, P4 in these races, he is still very, very secure um, as far as that top spot in the championship is concerned. Um, so it's really out of their hands and, and really Tim Yarshall's to lose. Yeah, it certainly is. Yeah, Timmy Arshaw has been a bit of a breakout star. We've, he's been around in the terms of race room esports at the top end of the uh, the talent list, if you like, and really has just proved to himself to be one of the very best. Um, he's just got a couple of race results to get now to just you know solidify himself as a champion. He'll get that role in the race room Discord as well uh, as a Hall of Famer, which is uh, something that these drivers will be looking to get as well. Right, maybe this is the first time you've joined, and if so, then we've got a lovely little highlights package from the last round of races which happened last week. Waiting for those lights to indeed disappear and to go green light racing. Across the line we will go. And we are off and running here in the second green. This is a great start from Tim Yarshall. Get straight ahead of, of Kevin Siggy. Kevin Siggy is going to be fighting his way with Nikodem Wisniewski. Although he loses out. Erhan Yajowski is going to go round the outside here. And I think by the time they come through turn number two, it is going to be Erhan that holds on. Is there a slight overlap though for Wisniewski? This is great news for the front two. It means they can drive away as they are all sort themselves out a little bit further back. Jeffrey Greenwell, I think, may have just found himself in position as well. Front two have got away beautifully well. Yeah be able to experience it for yourself but look how much fanning out is going on back here oh around is Axel Vermeulen and Leonardo Verla in the wall as well in the background a mess at the back of the field coming in towards the second to last corner but once again the biggest winner here was Ottaviani Ottaviani got the move done as soon as he possibly could and I tell you what on the defensive from Gianmarco Benucci now all of a sudden put him in a position to maybe make a move up ahead of course we've got now Lucas Muller who's just got two positions in one Wow, frantic stuff here. There it is. There's the fist bump. You can tell he's happy. 
And wow, well, there it is. Tim Yarshall is a winner once again. The last time he won was the second race of the season. He's been so consistent. Every single race, he has been in the top five. And well, he's just added another race victory to that. This is the 30 minute feature race. We've got ourselves a pit window during this as well, where they have to change all four tires. And we are off and we are running down towards turn number one. And I tell you what, Nikita Wisniewski has got an absolute flyer. And by the time we come through turn number one, I think he probably could have got across the bonnet there of Yasha. As you see a spin in the background then, that is one of the RAG cars. I think it might be Erhan Yayovsky. And Martin, that was Martin Shinjik, isn't it? Shinjik, who had such a good qualifying unfortunately finds himself massively down the order we are seeing drivers come down and in actually yarshell coming down and yeah. in there we go uh, same with jeffrey reedfeld in behind uh, so those are the early calls right, so here comes tim yarshell coming across the start finish line now there's the g2 esports car oh. further down the road as yarshell just about ahead, well he gets himself ahead of those two guys coming off the pit lane but not ahead of vizuski though yeah, but look at siggy siggy got Isaac price that was a, a massive hit entry for Kevin Siggy had to get that job done he's now behind his teammates so they've got to work together now and they don't really need to be too worried about Nikodem Wisniewski as to whether it is so we cross the line then and it is going to be the final lap and it is another race victory then for Wisniewski the fist pump is a plenty as Tim Yarshall finishes in second Rebelt in third Kevin Siggy in fourth and those are the four those are the four that are going to be challenging for this title heading into the final few rounds or the final four races of the season So that's what went down last week at the Saxon Ring. It belonged to Tim Yarshall and Nikodem Wisniewski. Those two uh, were absolutely brilliant. And that's why they are the top two in the championship. They are followed very closely, though, by Jeffrey Revelle in third position. And then we've got Kevin Siggy in fourth spot. Right, let's check out the calendar for the season then. We've, of course, already had four rounds to the championship. We have two left to go. So we had the Norris Ring, we had Nürburgring, Ring, Lausitz Ring, and the Saxon Ring. So if you've missed them, unfortunately, you're going to have to go back on YouTube to watch them. Uh, but today, it is the Red Bull Ring. And then next week, we head to the finale at the Hockenheim Ring, which should be pretty darn exciting. Let's check out then the timetable for this day of racing. Uh, of course, we have the countdown stream start. Quali 1 about to happen, about half past the hour. Uh, then we have Quali, uh, sorry, race number 1, which starts at 22.8 in Europe. Then we have Quali 2 for race number 2. Let me do some interviews if the drivers decide they want to get themselves involved. Uh, but then we have the stream end. It's really it's as simple as that. The only difference between race 1 and race 2 uh, is that the race number 1 is 20 minutes long and there's no pit stop window. And in race number two, there is a pit stop window which opens seven and a half minutes into the race and closes with seven and a half minutes to go. And the race is 30 minutes long. Right, let's check out the entry list very, very quickly. Have a little uh, buzz through here just so you can see all of our drivers. They are indeed in uh, alphabetical order. That's your 32 drivers. A couple of them have changed actually across the, the course of the season. We've had two drivers uh, being added in. Um, but yeah, for the most part, most of these drivers are still running and indeed racing. Right. Let's check out what they're actually racing for. Lots of prizes are up for grabs. Money, uh, real-life racing experiences, some electric scooters just for being a clean son of a gun. Let's check out that video. Lots of prizes on the line. Tested GT4 cars, a few racing licenses being thrown at you, uh, a chance to race in a Touran Wagon as well, uh, championship, which is 
Uh, where Kevin, Kelvin van der Linde started in Europe as well. So a big opportunity. Obviously, he's one of the best GT drivers in the world now. So you never know. That could be the start of a beautiful career. We've got one more video to show you before we get into our racing action. But this one is really exciting because this week, DTM, the testing season, got underway at the Hockenheim Ring, where they will indeed uh, crown another champion later this year. But yeah, the tests were out. The cars were out. The smell was out. And of course, the sound was out. Let's check out a little bit of highlights from the action this week. Endlich ist es wieder richtig laut. Denn die neue DTM-Saison ist gestartet. Auf dem Hockenheimring drehten die Fahrer bei den offiziellen Tests ihre ersten Runden. Die Vorfreude ist da, einfach weil es äh, so ein bisschen wie der erste Schultag ist. Äh, alle wieder zusammen, das erste Mal alle zusammen auf der Strecke. In der neuen DTM-Saison zu starten ist immer was ganz Besonderes. Man sieht die neuen äh, Beklebungen, Lackierungen, ganzen Teams, Fahrer, alles ist neu gemischt. Und das sind sie. 20 Fahrer der DTM-Saison 2024. Vertraute Gesichter treffen dabei auf frischen Wind. Zum allerersten Mal sind wir auch froh, dass die ersten 10 der letztjährigen Meisterschaft wieder dabei sind. DTM ist mega stark, das sind sicher die besten GT3, GT-Fahrer auf der Welt hier am Start. Ich glaube, wir können ganz viele Fahrer mit auf die Rechnung packen, die ja, wahrscheinlich hier in Hockenheim um den Titel kämpfen werden. So unterschiedlich die Fahrer als Typen sind, so eint sie ein Ziel. Sie alle wollen ihn schlagen, Thomas Preining. Doch der Champion ist heiß auf die Titelverteidigung. Der Titel letztes Jahr hat definitiv Hunger auf mehr gemacht. Das ist das beste, beste Gefühl, das ich bis jetzt erleben durfte. Von dem her werden wir alles dran setzen, um, um das wieder zu schaffen. In gut zwei Wochen geht es in Oschers Leben um die ersten Meisterschaftspunkte dieser ganz besonderen Saison, der 40. Jubiläumssaison der DTM. Mein erstes Jahr war 2002 im Vorprogramm der DTM, seitdem bin ich dabei und natürlich drei Titel in den 40 Jahren äh, eingefahren. Von dem her ja, bin, ich, bin ich stolz, ein kleiner Teil der DTM-Geschichte zu sein. Ich versuche jetzt seit einigen Jahren den dritten Titel hinterher zu fahren ähm, und den noch so einzupacken. Daher wäre es natürlich schön, wenn es im Jubiläumsjahr klappt. Doch egal, wer von ihnen Champion wird, Fakt ist, in dieser Saison gibt es definitiv etwas zu feiern. Happy Birthday, DTM. So, yeah, there we go. Some racing action for you uh, on the screen there. DTM will start in uh, just a few weeks' time, and it is the 40th anniversary of the season. So it should be nice and good. Plenty of drivers on the grid there. Uh, for me, Connery, to see uh, Nicky Tim and Mirko Borsalotti both in the same team, that's going to be absolutely fireworks. Yeah, two absolute legends. That's that's going to be that's gonna be crazy. And, uh, you know, just the caliber of the... Um, of the real DTM fields uh, here this season is, is certainly a testament to, uh, you know, its continuing health at this stage. Because, you know, it hasn't always been absolutely fantastic. That's fine to say. But, of course, the future is looking uh, uh, looking brighter and brighter for the series as time goes on, uh, both in the real world side of things and here on the eSports side of things as well. Um, it, it does seem like uh, it, it's starting to it go from strength to strength. Yeah, the, the strongest grid in the real world of motorsport in terms of GT driving as a fact. It is as simple as that. And now we head over to some racing action with the strongest GT field on race room, which is also a fact. Let's head over the Red Bull ring then as we see the drivers there all in their little Zoom call waiting to get themselves involved with the racing action. So we've got ourselves a qualifying session to then take us into our first race of the evening. So let's head out to the Red Bull ring and see what is absolutely occurring. There we go. Some cars, some tracks. Oh, and the Red Bull Ring. Connery, what are we expecting from today? Ah, uh, well, uh, we're expecting, hopefully, a whole bunch of overtakes because, you get, again, this is the Red Bull Ring. You know, it's very short, very furious circuit. However, you do have some opportunities to try and go for the absolute dive bomb, sling yourself down the inside. Most notably in towards turn three and turn four as well. So I don't think we'll see the same situation here as we have at some other circuits where we had a lot of drivers stuck behind others, uh, unable to make moves. I think the opportunities are there at this racetrack to get by. It just requires a lot of commitment. 
Yeah, it certainly does. Again, we're going to probably uh, butt each other's heads here because I think it's turn two and turn three that there's going to be overtaking opportunities, not turn three and turn four. I don't believe that what you would call turn two is really a turn, but we'll agree to disagree. Um, but yeah, you're right. Up to the top of the hill to Remus. Remus is the probably the most prominent in terms of an overtaking opportunity. Uh, Schloss Gold as well uh, for turn number three. But it's going to take a stellar performance from these drivers today to get a race result. Uh, yeah, it, it absolutely is. So that is that's the long and short of it here, uh, Lu uh, Lucas. We get ourselves um, our first lap started uh, here in this particular qualifying session. Uh, it's fantastic to see these drivers, um, you know, put in all the effort that they can uh, in these sorts of events. It's 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 great to see. Do you want to, do you want to hear some facts? I know you love some facts from me. Some championship facts from the drivers. Go on then. Right, okay, copy. I was waiting for you to say, yeah, 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 get really excited. But don't worry about it. I'll get really excited. Yeah, 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 I want to hear it. Uh, most wins this season. Nikodem wisniewski has got three. And then we've got Tim Yasha and Kevin Siggy, both with two wins each. Uh, most podiums, Tim Yasha has got seven. Nikodem's got six. And Kevin Siggy has got five. Um, in terms of top fives, and most top fives, Tim's got nine uh, out of a possible nine. Nikodem wisniewski has got seven. And Jeffrey Rietveld has got seven. And most top tens. It's nine for Tim Yasha. Nikodem's got eight. And Jeffrey has eight. That's why those three are the top in the championship, because they've been consistently good. Why is Tim uh, right at the sharp end of the uh, grid? He's not been outside the top five, which is absolutely ridiculous. I look at Wisniewski. He's had a DNF and a P22 this year. Jeffrey Rietveld has had a P21 and a, a P7. I guess you can't really count that as a bad result. Um, you know, without that P21, I think Jeffrey's comfortably in, um, well, comfortably in second position, maybe even challenging for the lead. Kevin Siggy has had a DNF this season in the P15. Um, so, yeah, that's why Tim Yarshall is indeed leading this championship. Not because he's, you know, just been going out there and winning a couple of races. It is the fact that he's just got top five after top five after top five. Nearly as consistency is the name of a game in a series like this. You can't be having off weeks here and there. You, you have to be on top of your game, constantly getting inside those podium positions, constantly getting top fives to be able to put yourself in the best position. And like you mentioned, Luke, that's exactly what Yashal has done uh, to try and get his uh, his gap that he currently holds in the championship. But we're seeing a couple of our first laps come through. Of course, driver is not quite up to speed just yet. Usual, these would usually be sort of banker laps, and, you know, a solid and respectable lap time to then build off of for the rest of the uh, of the session. That's what the drivers are trying to achieve at the moment. It is Nikodem Wisniewski that is a provisional pole position here at the moment by just about one and a half tenths of a second, but we are expecting that field to uh, tighten up by the time this qualifying uh, session is done. It always happens. Yeah, I was a bit uh, worried as to whether Tim Yasha had already incurred that, that qualifying ban that Kevin Siggy last week told us he was very close to. Uh, I can see he's doing a first sector out there, so that would appear that that is not the case. He's yet to get a lap time in though, so maybe a little bit of pressure, uh, but Tim Yasha, does he really, you know, does he really feel pressure? I'm not sure he does, he's been that good during this season because I'm telling you ladies and gentlemen if it's your first time ever tuning in you're thinking Tim Yarshall is the only driver with loads of top fives must be a really easy championship this is maybe the closest GT cha uh, championship in the world it's that ridiculously close oh Yarshall abandoning that lap though so he, he hasn't had a good run of things early on in this qualifying session still yet to set well any lap time let alone a competitive one so time is of the essence here for Yarshall he should, he should still have plenty of should have plenty of time to at least get a, a, some form of respectable lap in, but it's, it's not been the best uh, opening to the session for that uh, Porsche driver. Here comes Enzo Benito. He's going to come across the line and start a lap here in a couple of moments. Lots of movement on the timing screen. Wisniewski still holding on to that provisional pole position. But it is Kevin Siggy who's in second place at the moment. Dominic Blyer uh, in third as we see yet more names get promoted up that order. Yeah, I think it's really important that you've just me mentioned there that getting a banker lap time is... Yeah, of the utmost importance. Wisniewski, Kevin Siggy, of course, both of those drivers are in the top four of the championship. Where uh, is Jeffrey Rietveld? Rietveld uh, is, well, he's yet to put a lap time in. He's down in P31 there. I wonder if he, does he have a qualifying ban of some sort? Maybe he does as well. Might be worth going on board with him and checking him out. No, he doesn't. Wait, wait, hold on. He did just momentarily move up the order. There he goes, there so go. P4. So there we go. That's that confirmed. He is golden. Uh, he is all good. No, he, he keeps dropping down to P31. So I'm wondering. What's going on here? What, yeah, I'm not sure what is going on there, but Revelk does move up the order, and then he keeps dropping down the order. So, yeah, not sure exactly what's happening there. Uh, but right now, yeah, Tim Yashu is under a lot of pressure. Currently, 
if it was to start right now, would be starting P27, which would be perfect for our front two. Uh, not so perfect for Tim himself. Yeah, I'm just going to try and refresh our overlays here a little bit and uh, see if that solves it. But uh, uh, but yeah, uh, uh, no, it seems still a bit undecided about where Rietveld is. He has an official position. You know, I mean, it says P31 down at the bottom, and then it tries to promote him up. We'll have to see what happens there. Anyway, uh, Isaac Price uh, coming up across the line oh, now. Oh, there he is, P3. Tim Yarshall, uh, just uh, one and a bit tenth of a second off of pole position. And I think if you offer him P3 before the week, uh, the day starts, he takes that. All he needs to do realistically is, again, just keep finishing in those top five. And he will be your DTM Esports Pro Series champion of 2024. Following in the footsteps of drivers such as Kevin Siggy, uh, as Moritz Lohner, uh, even Tim Heinemann. So, yeah, massive, massive names uh, ahead of him. We've managed to do it before him. Yeah, Tim Yashaw looking to add his name to that list and currently in that top three looking very good indeed. Yeah, I think I think Rietveld's time, well, the the, the graphics are bugged out on Re on, on Rietveld's uh, like position, but that time does seem to be accurate. So um, 102 uh, behind pole position so that would make Rietveld P3 Third. at the moment. Yeah. He would be P3 and that's, yeah, I say it's almost um, a complete reversal of how the championship is. It's not. Not in the winner. Uh, Kevin Siggy about to come across the line to start on the lap. Marco Payet, the Mad Dog, who, uh, fun fact for you, has been P10 the last four races in a row. Wow, that's that's yeah. that, that's a that's a that's a streak, isn't it? I mean, he would love it it's to be P1 yeah. four races in a row, but but Vegas Cup I suppose. Certainly not the streak I'd like from Marco Page. He is a beautiful looking man. Anyway, moving swiftly on, uh, Lena <laughs> Carton across the line uh, for the Academy. Uh, I believe that they are partnered with Falcon Sim Racing. So Falcon Sim Racing are effectively the sort of the uh, the mummy and daddy of the uh, Academy group. Um, I could, could be wrong there, but I'm pretty sure that they're all partnered in some form or some way. Uh, but there's the, the one of the Falcon cars, Leonard Krippner, who is, of course, with Tim Yarshall, is with Lucas Muller as well, but they've not really been up there backing up um, Tim. Tim's genuinely done this on his own this season. You've got the Redline boys who've got a couple of drivers to work with. Uh, G2 have had a couple of drivers to kind of help each other at the sharp end. But yeah, Tim Yarshaw hasn't had a rear gunner, has not had a wingman to work with and ultimately uh, is doing a really, really good job on his own. Yeah, it's impressive considering that fact, right? That uh, he doesn't have any help or, or very little help at the front of the field yet is uh, still able to put up uh, the stellar performances uh, amongst pressure from... You know, the likes of Redline, who have had a couple of drivers inside that top five on multiple occasions, but uh, um, struggling to get the, uh, the the top step of the podium. So, yeah, that's, uh, that, that is a, a very interesting one. So a, a very self-sufficient Tim Yarshall here at the moment. Uh, currently P5, uh, or I don't know, well, P5, maybe P6, depending on where the system decides to put Rietveld um, uh, currently at the moment. So not... Not the best qualifying session we've seen from Yarshall. Um, he, he would certainly wouldn't like to be losing on the points delta coming into the final round of the season just to make it a little bit closer. But uh, um, but I, I imagine his, his main priority here is just get to the finish roughly inside that top five. Yeah, I think this is good for uh, for the likes of Siggy, for Wisniewski, and I think Rebel is in third position. So those three mm -hmm. needing dri more and more drivers between them and Tim Yasha. Tim Yasha currently in a sixth position. We believe it might be seventh position again once it figures itself out. Uh, so yeah, this is good. Is there anyone else that can maybe move up? Lucas Muller, by the way, it looks like he is going to be able to move up the order. But well, Enzo Benito has moved up the order then. So P2 for Enzo Benito. And that's another driver a bit further ahead. Uh, pushing oh, Tim Yarshal down. But as I say that, Tim Yarshal, under the, uh, an immense amount of pressure, has managed to put himself up onto the front row of the grid and scrap everything I've just said because now he is, he's is he got his own destiny in his own hands. That is brilliant work there from Tim Yarshal. So he, on my money, is P2. I think that will now... Yeah, I think... Well, Brzezinski's now up to P5. I think Rietveld is officially P5 uh, once this all figures itself out. So Kevin Siggy up and across the line then, where does uh, uh, he finish in terms of this particular lap? Is he still maintaining P4? Yeah, I think he is. Uh, just one tenth of a second behind the leader. The top three, well, top four are covered by that single tenth of a second, which is absolutely crazy. Yeah, I will say one thing here. Uh, Tim Yashul needs one more pole position to guarantee himself the pole position award, which will be uh, the prize is going to be an Asher steering wheel. 
That's a really, really cool prize. Uh, Nikodem Wisniewski has currently got one pole position already, and he's keeping it alive. So if he can keep hold of this pole, that means he'll be on two, but he will have to take pole position in the next three races just to tie Tim Yarshall. And again, I guess they get half of a rim each. I don't know how that works. Well, I mean, it'll have to share, right? You know, cut it straight down the middle. <laughs> you get it for one week, and then you got send it to me. <laughs> no, I was, I was thinking literally cut fortune. I was thinking literally cut it straight down the middle. I, I mean, the wheel won't work anymore, but at least they get half and half, right? Yeah, no, I think it might be more beneficial to keep sending it to each other. But there we go. It's confirmation that Nikodem Wisniewski is going to be your pole sitter. So congratulations to Wisniewski. There are a couple of seconds here where the session, you know, positions can change. Uh, I'm not sure if any of the top drivers were on a lap time. Uh, Enzo Benito, who was banned from qualifying both races last time out, has made up for that today by qualifying in third spot. You've then got Kevin Siggy in fourth. Will Enzo come into play here and help Kevin Siggy out? Can he get ahead of Tim Yarshall and help Kevin Siggy get ahead? Because that is exactly what's going to happen here today. One, Enzo Benito is going to do everything in his power to try and get Kevin and Jeffrey the best results they possibly can. Yeah, absolutely. He's got to be a menace inside of Yarshall's mirrors. Um, that's for sure. Um, they, they, they've really got to put him off his game. They got, they got to pull out every single trick in the book that is legal by the rule book um, uh, to try and. Uh, make Yashal finish somewhere outside the top five because really that's the only scenario from both races here today where they have any shot or any decent shot at taking this championship um, uh, in the final round of the season. But of course then they have the issue of uh, Wisniewski who has currently got himself uh, onto uh, provisional pole position. He is of course um, the, the big challenger uh, to Tim Yashal here in this one. He is second place in that championship and uh, well, he's done all that he needs to do in qualifying here at the moment, but with his direct competitor starting on the same row of the grids, um, it, it's it's little respite, I suppose. No, you're not wrong. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to get some answers. I hear a few people going, where was Jeffrey? Uh, I'm just going to throw a uh, question out there to the race room uh, guys to figure out whether that is, indeed is a... Uh, yeah, it, it, whether indeed that is a bug or not. Uh, although we're about to find out, to be completely honest. It's nearly race time for race one, Connery, of two. It is, and we're all set up here at the Red Bull Ring. Of course, it may, you know has a chance to be a pretty chaotic start. Well, race starts at the Red Bull Ring usually are. I think the only other track that's worse for it is probably Monza, right? Um, but uh, but yeah, you know it's a, it's a you know single file line through Lauda Curve, you know turn number one, and then of course we have that long run down into the braking zone at turn three, where um, we potentially might see multiple instances of side by side, maybe even three wide on the first lap of things. Let's just hope everyone gets through it okay. Yeah, turn number two or, or three, whatever you want to call it, the one at the top of the hill, Remus. Mm -hmm. That is going to be the biggest pinch point. That's going to be the best overtaken opportunity. You can also use that corner to set yourself up for a move down towards Schlossgold, oh. which is e, uh, which is turn number three. And, well, Jeffrey is in P31 here. So I'm not sure what has exactly happened. Um, but his time on the leaderboard was saying that he was only, well, he would have been fifth. But ultimately, he is down in the uh, 31st position. So, again, I'm, 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 I wonder, I'll hope we get an answer during this. But he definitely wasn't banned from qualifying because he did put laps in. That's why a time popped up. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, very odd. Very odd indeed. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll have to try and see if we can get any word from race control um, regarding that one. But uh, I think if you read Feltz, well, as frustrating as it may be, if he's been put here uh, due to an issue, you know, it sucks, but you have to deal with the card that you've been uh, you've been dealt with here at the moment. So P31 starts right now for the Dutch driver of Je Jeffrey Rietveld. We'll get word on what has happened uh, as soon as we uh, we are able to uh, get that word back from uh, from race control. Um, but uh, you know, for everyone else though, and notably for Wisniewski, he's going to be relatively happy about the situation. One less red line car at the front of the field to be uh, dealing with. Same with Yarshall. Yeah, well, you know, red line will probably be hoping there was three up there. Um, but I'm not sure exactly what's going on. Uh, we've just not, yeah, we've got an answer. I'm not sure why. So, yeah, <laughs> everyone's a little bit perplexed as to what's going on there. But like you just said there, Conor, we've got to move on. It is what it is. Nikodem Wisniewski, Tim Yarshall are your front two. Then we've got Enzo Benito and Kevin Siggy, both, more importantly, of the same team. So maybe they can work together to figure something out here. Brzezinski, Jacob Brzezinski, who's just joined G2 recently with Nikodem. Can he, you know, get in between the two red line cars and try and spoil their party of moving their way up towards the front? 
Uh, that remains to be seen. We've got Marco Pejic on the run of four consecutive uh, top tens, or sorry, P10s, not even just top tens, P10s for Marco Pejic. Looking to break that duck. We've then got Dominic Blair in seventh, Marcel Shinchik in eighth. We had a very miserable time last time out. Then we've got Lucas Muller and Erhan Yeyoski. If you couldn't tell where Tim Yash was from, he has got the patch on the side of his shirt there. There is the German flag representing Germany. Tim Yashel here in Austria with a couple of corners to go. Quick predictions then, Connery. Who's going to get the dub? Wisniewski has shown very good pace in the last couple of races this season. If he can pull away from Yashel here, which is no small task, then he should have this one on lock and key. Okay, well, I think that we might see either a... Uh, I think we might see Jacob Brzezinski cause a bit of a shock here. I think he's going to try and get involved with the red line cars. Uh, but he might end up moving it right the way up the order. Brzezinski is one of those drivers, if he gets a bit between his teeth, he is a very, very dangerous driver indeed. I mean that in the nicest possible way. Across the line we go then, it is indeed round five kickoff here. And well, as we head up towards turn number one, it's a very good start from Enzo Benito. And actually, he might have just got himself ahead of the Porsche of our championship leader, Tim Yarschel. Jakob Brzezinski has got ahead of Evan Siggy, and he's looking to get ahead then of Tim Yarschel. Up through turn one they've come now. We come through the imaginary turn number two and the gap for Wisniewski is beautiful. Loving life as we head up towards Remus for the very first time. Tim Yasha is going to look to make a move there on Enzo Benito. No, he does not. And Kevin Siggy has just gone back up the inside of Jakob Brzezinski. He's up to P4. And well, the only big move really is Enzo Benito. Last week, a miserable week. This week, kicked off with an absolute bang. Yeah, Benito, fantastic move on the start of the race here as we see uh, uh, the, the battles going on further behind. This is Kevin Siggy versus uh, Jacob Brzezinski now. Brzezinski trying to press on forward. Page further back in line in this as well. Everyone's just kind of been stacked up here uh, outside of this top three. They all get themselves single file uh, in towards turn six, however, and then same again in towards uh, turn seven. This is really not uh, a section of circuit. You can go very easily go wheel to wheel through. I can and have seen it happen uh, but uh, not on the first lap here of this first race of the DCM Esports Pro Championship at the Red Bull Ring as these guys file their way through the final couple of corners. Yeah 24 points up for grabs in this race, 34 points up for grabs in the next race so yeah plenty of points uh, up for grabs but this one's not worth as many as the second race be it it is a little bit shorter uh, but across the line we go then to end lap number one Wisniewski leads the way first position for him Enzo Benito is in second Tim Yarshall in third Kevin Siggy fourth Brzezinski is in fifth the only real change there is Enzo's got up ahead of Tim Yarshall uh, and realistically now if if it does become obvious that he's not going to catch up to Nikodem Wisniewski how quickly does he decide to slow down the pack and maybe just maybe make an opportunity for Kevin Siggy although Kevin has got Jakob Brzezinski all up in his rear view mirror now to the side of his car well, by the time we come out of Remus, it is a lovely spot then for him, P4. G2 Esports car again going towards driver's left-hand side as Siggy has to go defensive here in towards four. That shallower line being taken, maybe there's an opportunity off the off the corner here for the Porsche. Uh, it's going to carry a bit more speed through, could be potentially angle it to the inside of six. That's a move that can happen here at the Red Bull ring, but not close enough to be able to make that move. No gap on the inside to be able to utilize there for Brzezinski, who's uh, shown a lot of pace so far in this race. I know we've only had a couple of laps under our belt, but uh, he's seemingly uh, charging hard and wasn't seeing a bit of an issue. Yeah, so, you know, it's one thing saying, can Enzo slow down Tim Yasha and give Siggy a position here? But you can't, you can't when they're fighting like this. Um, Tim Yasha looks like he's keeping up with, with just genuine pace anyway. Uh, so you kind of also don't want to give a freebie opportunity because Enzo's going to stop you know, he's going to start losing that slipstream of Nikita and Wisniewski. The gap now up to about a second, uh, just a couple more tenths here, and it will be over in terms of getting a drag from the car in front. Nikita and Wisniewski proving once again that he is probably the form driver in the championship in terms of their last uh, few results. The last three races is P1, P3, P1. Tim Yash was P3, P1, P2. Uh, so, yeah, in net positions, one position better off than our championship leader. So those two have been the strongest throughout this season and maybe it's Nikodem Wisniewski you know we, we would say that because the red line drivers have had their cut drivers up sharper end together a bit more often that they would have a bigger chance but as the championship has gone on here Nikodem Wisniewski really has yeah, genuinely thrown a claim towards this championship uh, the only thing is he's had a DNF and he's had a P22 this season which has really killed that momentum but he was to go out and win the next four races you never never know all it takes is one bad race from Tim Yarshall may have Wisniewski 
taking that crown. Yeah, that's 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 what he's hoping for at the moment. He's doing all that he needs to do is Wisniewski. You know, he, he can't physically do anything more than lead this race <laughs> at the moment and try and get maximum points from it. It's just the set, uh, the circumstances behind that will decide whether or not he's close in the championship or not. That's just the situation. Of course, Enzo Benito getting the good start, getting himself ahead of Yarshell is a very big help here. Means that Yarshell just using the, that, losing that few more points to Wisniewski, making it a little bit closer uh, when we get towards the final round of the season. Uh, I'd argue he'd need uh, maybe two, maybe three more cars in between himself and, and Yarshell at the moment to, to, to make it uh, as competitive as he would like it. Yeah, 100%. A Yasha, by the way, running very, very deep on the exit of turn number one. A very different line to what Enzo Benito was taking. More pressure from behind for Kevin Siggy as well as Kevin uh, will run the G2 car out a little bit wider. Does leave room on in the exit in the end, but he is under some severe pressure. That Porsche looking very quick indeed. Down towards Stoskold then for the fifth time of this race. Well, Jakub Brzezinski has been told, if you want to make this move, you've got to go round the outside. But look, he's also in behind them. Marko Mad Dog Pejic. Maybe an opportunity for the German to make a move himself. He's also dragging along with him Dominic Blyer. Marcel Shinshik currently in eighth position. Lucas Muller in ninth. And we've got Erhan Iyovsky in that tenth position. Jakub Brzezinski making his way then through the Worth curve. Runs a little bit deep there as well. In that line, very similar to the car in front. Be struggling with the tyres a little bit in terms of temperature this uh, early stage of the race. You see them just pushing as hard as they possibly can. These two have been fighting from the start. Now we head through Rink now into the Red Bull mobile curve. Well, it is normal service to you, Kevin. There just missing, not the same missing the apex, the apex not as much as Jakub Brzezinski. But these two, I think these might be going for the next 11 minutes 20 seconds. Stuck together like glue art on circuit at the moment. Brzezinski has a, has a chance here and there. And doesn't quite Spikes. get the best exit coming out of turn one. That might mean he actually comes under threat from Payich behind, rather than trying to attack Siggy uh, in front here. We can get the look back from Brzezinski's car. Look how big that BMW is uh, in the view there. But no opportunity down in towards the braking zone here. Bit of a wider arc taken there by Payich to try and get speed and the traction off the corner. And, uh, We'll see if this gets close on the way down in towards four. It's good to see a BMW so high up the field, though. We haven't had that in a while. Yeah, the VFP's not really favoured them, to be completely honest. Um, but yeah, it's not, it's not been the quickest of cars, but Marco dragging that car around. Uh, Ferducci, the next of the BMWs in the line, currently in 11th spot. Then we've got Vermeulen uh, and Bent Banky as the top four of the BMWs. They are in the top 13, no, all of them. Uh, sorry, top 15 are uh, all of them. So they are contending for pretty decent positions. Uh, Kevin Siggy, by the way, just got the fastest lap of the race the last time round. So, yeah, a little bit of breathing space via Market Payich starting to attack. Even Kevin Siggy the opportunity to try and chase down Tim at Yarshul. And I wonder if Kevin could get that move done and then how long would it take before Enzo decides to pull over and let his teammate through? Because I'm pretty sure that is uh, going to happen if he can get past Tim Yarshul. So Yarshul right now, it is in his own hands. Wisniewski is going to close the gap during this race. He is going to close the gap, but it's not going to be a crazy significant uh, closing of that gap. So it should be still well within Tim Yarshul's hands. It definitely will be, um, that's for certain. But yeah, he just needs to not panic at this stage. And this is now where someone like Tim Yarshul, who hasn't been in contention for a big championship like this yet, this is, you know, he's new to this. This is where things can start to, you know, you start have phantom thoughts in your brain and you start making some rash decisions. You see a potential move being made by Marco Pejic up towards Remus. He goes out nice and wide to open up the corner. So Jakub Brzezinski is equal to it, and they will stay in fifth and sixth. Yeah, you are quite right about Tim, though. This, this is a foreign territory to him, as we see another attempt here from Pejic. Long way around on here on Brzezinski, not quite going to maintain that overlap coming through the exit of the corner here. And again, this is actually stacking up a couple of bit more traffic behind. You've got Dominic Blyer in the Williams Esports uh, Audi looking to try and get aggressive at this stage. You've got Marcel Chinjic in there as well. So it does seem like uh, Brzezinski is being a bit of a, a bottleneck for these guys here at the moment. As, as Page was unable to get his way through. And now Blyer and, Cinj uh, Blyer and Cinj Cinjic are, uh, are the ones that are Maybe a little bit more eager at this stage. You can see a slight nose to the inside from, from Chinchik there. Yeah, tyre wear is not going to be the biggest factor over a 20-minute race. So they're good with that. But 
tire temperature is a big issue. So, you know, you fight a fight with Kevin Siggy, just like Jekka Brzezinski's done. You're pushing the tires. You're not really worried about the tires at that stage. You're trying to make a move. So you're just thinking about that objective. So you overheat the tires and a couple of laps, you're going to suffer for it. So now it's about a case of getting them back into a decent temperature range and you can move on in this race. But Kevin Siggy defended it nicely and now pushing towards Tim Yashim. Look at this cluster of three. This is a battle for a top six. Indeed it is, and a move to the inside there. Dominic Blyer not quite going to complete it, but he goes deep on the brakes regardless, and it, he's also having to try and focus on defending from uh, Chinchik behind as well. Chinchik tapped up inside of the draft. Of course, Blyer's going to get a little bit from uh, Payich ahead as well. Is there a move to the inside? Yeah, no. Although I think Chinchik was tempted by it. Yeah, he looked for a little nibble there, decided against it. These two... Uh, have been racing each other in other series over the last 12 months. So they're very, uh, very well, I say Dominic Blyer, they've got involved with the ESLR1 later in the season uh, and proved to be one of the very quicker drivers, just like Marcel Shinshik, of course, the first season champion. So these two are well versed in each other's driving styles. Uh, Joe Vespi, note there is uh, no drive, uh, sorry, no team champion, it's just a driver's championship. So you're yeah, yeah, trying to, to get the best performance for your drivers individually. Marcel Shinshik there taking a nice tight line through now down in towards that Red Bull mobile curve again. And uh, Dominic Blyer is again equal to it. And if anything, it's gained a little bit of time. Yeah, absolutely. It, it, it does seem that Blyer is able to get the exits out of the corners um, here at the moment. And Kitchen committing to turn number one there. A little bit of ground. Not uh, quite enough to be able to be a big threat at the moment. But um, we, we know, we certainly know the capabilities of Chinchik, you know, Go and win championships. Not this one at the moment, though, but it's previously won championships against some very, very stiff up competition on other platforms. Um, so this, this is definitely within his abilities to try and uh, progress on forward in this race. Yeah, Marco Page, by the way, very, very close towards uh, Jakub Brzezinski. Has that outside line as we come through Schloss Gold. And by the time we come through the exit, he's being covered off, but that's given Dominic Blair a chance to catch up. That's given Marcel Shinshik a chance to catch up. So the battle for the top six is very much on. Kevin Siggy still with that fastest lap of the race. He is now only a tenth of a second behind Tim Yarshall. So the group battling for that P2 are very close as well. Actually, four tenths separating all three of them. So Enzo Benito, can he do his teammate a favor here and get him ahead of Tim Yarshall? It's not going to happen into the second to last corner. It's also not going to happen into the last corner. You might be able to back them up into the first corner and then they would lose a hell of a lot of time if they especially get caught up on the outside line through turn number one. Uh, but realistically, you're trying to set this up either into turn number two, which is uh, Remus, or if Connery, for Connery is turn number three, or turn number four, which is Schlock. Those are the two big overtaking opportunities here. So can Enzo make something happen? You can see he's going very slow through there for sure. He is trying to hold up Tim Yashri. Now moves across. And well, is there an opportunity for Kevin Siggy? Kevin Siggy is the third car in the train. We're getting a lovely cockpit view then as we head up towards Remus. For the tenth time, the gap has opened up there. Tim Yasha is going to drive across. I think that might have been a little bit too late in terms of the defensive move, but he has held on. There's not too much contact actually. It might be perfect. And now Kevin Siggy's got to do all that work once again. Enzo Benito slowing down the German just in behind him. And he's now got to let Kevin go around the outside. As we come down towards Schloss Gold, Enzo's done the job. Kevin's going to go around the outside. And that's why it pays to have a teammate in and around the top with you because it makes it a little bit easier and you can gain some positions. It's not pretty, but perfectly played by Team Redline there. That is uh, that is how you work together. I know you know there'll be some in the chat that'll say, wait, that's not fair. You know, you can't use another driver to block another, but just look at Formula One, for example, happens all the time there. All is fair in love and war. And uh, well, when you have your teammates at the front, why not utilize it to your best advantage by pulling off that strategy? Well, if you have Falcon Sim Racing with two cars up there, they'd be doing exactly mm -hmm. the same thing. If you had two G2 cars up there, they'd be doing exactly the same thing. Now, can Enzo potentially do the same and get a couple of cars between Kevin and Tim Yarshal? This is not only helping out uh, uh, Kevin, though, of course. It's helping out Nikodem Wisniewski. Wisniewski, who's currently in the lead of this race now by 2.6 seconds, it's helping him out too. So Tim Yarshal starting to, again, feel the pressure. And right now for him, 
because he is close to that qualifying ban, he cannot afford to get involved too much here. So if he does lose a couple of positions, he loses a couple of positions. It is as simple as that. Do not put yourself in a position where you get that qualifying ban because that could maybe kill your championship lead. Yeah, he, he, he's got to keep it clean. And that's probably the most frustrating thing. We didn't have his webcam up, a webcam up when, when that move happened, but I didn't see it myself. But I, I could just imagine the reaction when he realized that the, the, the red line car was holding him up. And, uh, and uh, well, Benito was holding him up and, and just to let Siggy all the way through. And now he has another issue to think about because he has Brzezinski right behind him, who's uh, um, been having, having a decent amount of pace today in this race one. So he might have something to say to Yarshall before this race is done uh, as well. But yeah, it, it must be pretty frustrating behind the wheel um, of that Porsche at the moment, the Falcon Sim Racing Porsche, because you know, that's not a way you want to lose positions. But in the end, you can't really be too mad about it because like you said, if Falcon were in the same position, they would have done the exactly same thing as well. Yeah, there was nothing dirty about it. No one's tried to put him on the grass or anything like that. It was just a simple case of boxing in and then sweeping around the outside. Um, I've had confirmation, by the way, uh, that um, Jeffrey was put into the wrong grid slot, um, which Ooh. is out of his control. He did qualify P4. They put him in P31, so not ideal. It is a separate server they for race number two, so fingers crossed that uh, all will be good for race number two. Back to the action then. Second to last lap, Tim Yarshall. Again, championship leader. This is not the end of the world. P4 is still a good result. T four top fours here, and he is going to... Oh, sorry, four top fives in this championship uh, heading towards the end of it and he's going to win the championship it really is as simple as that so just keep your nerve you're going to lose a couple of points here but it's nothing too crazy he, he came into this week with a 43 point advantage so you know that's uh, that's almost a, a race win and a half of a feature race um so it's not it's not the end of the world. he's done the hard work he's done the hard graph he's got all those big performances at the start of the season now it's just all about not making any mistakes not for letting people force you into mistake. That's exactly it. It's uh, uh, he's got to show a lot of maturity here, and he actually has matured quite a lot, um, especially um, in the past couple of years or so. Um, he, he's got to not respond to this now. He, he's got to not, you know, go for a risky move on, on Benito as a, as a bit of revenge. He's just got to sit there, just stay calm, take some deep breaths, and go. Okay, keep the big picture in mind. P4 is still fine as far as my championship is concerned. If there's an obvious opportunity, like getting a run out of one right now, um, then he might go for it, but he, he's got to be careful. He certainly does. And well, I think you'll find he's going to tr at least try, maybe force Enzo to run off. Like, you know, he's not even tried. He's decided against even trying there. And I think that's a clever play. Tim Yashu, uh, maybe, you know, uh, new to being at the sharp end of the championship, but he is very much driving where, as if he's been there many, many times before. Currently in that P4, this will be a really good result moving to race number two today. Uh, the only thing I would be worried about is that if Jakob Brzezinski does get uh, even a snifter of an opportunity to make no pick, he will look to do that because it takes points away from Yashu and helps his teammate Nikola Wisniewski. So again, he's not a million miles away from another teammate battling uh, to help out another teammate in Nikola Wisniewski. As we head then towards the final chicane, in towards the final couple of corners, well, Tim, oh, sorry, Nikodem Wisniewski has managed to win two out of his last three. He's about to make it four, uh, sorry, three out of the last four as we come around the final couple of corners. Nikodem Wisniewski, the form driver in the championship, it is safe to say a couple of bad results has rendered him maybe with a slim chance of winning this championship. But as he crosses the line, that championship chance has just become a little bit bigger. Nikodem Wisniewski then does take P1. Kevin Siggy takes second. Enzo Benito takes third. Those two drivers between... Nikodem and Tim means that he will close the championship lead to Tim a little bit more than he would have anticipated. So it's still on again. It was a 43 point gap coming into today. So Nikodem would need to win, I think, all four races. Uh, very much the same as Kevin Siggy uh, coming into this, uh, all unless Tim has an, a real nightmare of a race at some point. Jakob Brzezinski, who was battling with Kevin Siggy ferociously for the first sort of five or six minutes, he finishes P5. Uh, Marco Pejic breaks the duck of four. P10s in a row, he finishes in P6. Dominic Blyer, seventh. We then got Marcel Shinshik in eighth. Lucas Muller in ninth. And then Ethan Yuyovsky in tenth position. Next group of drivers then, Gianmarco Feducci is in 11th position. Then we've got Jack Keithley in 12th. Axel Vermaelen in 13th. Isaac Price in 14th. Ben's Banky 15th. 
uh, Emre Chihan in 16th, Gillison 17th, 18th for Ottaviani, and then we have got Carton and Peringa in 19th and 20th spot. And then the rest of our drivers, then Peringa, uh, Mitchell, Toman, Kunza, Kripma, Neg, we've got Hassa, Lona, uh, Delorme, and Jeffrey Rietveld. Uh, we then also got Rudinger and uh, Werner in the background as well. So that is all of your drivers there. So race one done and dusted. Oh, that was uh, an interesting one there. Of course, Nikola Wisniewski didn't really have to look backwards there. He qualified in P1. He's managed to get the race victory as well. The only thing he didn't get was fast enough. I think Kevin Siggy got that. I think the biggest talking point, and there's going to be people in the chat who will be like, oh, that's not really that fair. And there's going to be others going, yeah, that's absolutely fair. <laughs> uh, I guess it depends on which team you support. Uh, but yeah, Tim Yashu got shuffled down the pack because Enzo Benito slowed him down to let Kevin Siggy go for his teammate, who is, of course, fighting for the championship, although it is a slim chance of him winning it entirely because Tim Yashu has just been that good so far this season. But I think that's what any teammate would do. Uh, yeah, I, I think so, too. Um, if I was in that position, uh, you know, I'm out of, well, I'm, you know, I'm outside of the championship fight or all right on the edge of it. You know, if my teammate has a good opportunity to try and uh, go chasing for it, then of course I'm going to help them out. That's just uh, that's just the situation, and that's the understanding uh, that they have, and um, that's uh, that's just the deal. Sometimes there's, there's no really really no other way I can say it. Um, and uh, of course, maybe uh, uh, Siggy is going to buy a, a Benito a beer or two after uh, to try and uh, <laughs> just say thank you for that one. Yeah, I think anyone would like to buy Enzo Benito a beer or two, wouldn't they? That is just uh, the way the world the way the world is. Uh, right. Anyway, we've just finished race number one. We're very shortly going to head to race number two here at the Red Bull Ring. But this week, testing began for the DTM 40th anniversary season at the Hockenheim Ring. Here is some footage to show you how it went. Endlich ist es wieder richtig laut. Denn die neue DTM-Saison ist gestartet. Auf dem Hockenheimring drehten die Fahrer bei den offiziellen Tests ihre ersten Runden. Die Vorfreude ist da, einfach weil es äh, so ein bisschen wie der erste Schultag ist. Äh, alle wieder zusammen, das erste Mal alle zusammen auf der Strecke. In der neue DTM-Saison zu starten ist immer was ganz Besonderes. Man sieht die neuen äh, Beklebungen, Lackierungen, ganzen Teams, Fahrer, alles ist neu gemischt. Und das sind sie. 20 Fahrer der DTM-Saison 2024. Vertraute Gesichter treffen dabei auf frischen Wind. Zum allerersten Mal sind wir auch froh, dass die ersten zehn der letztjährigen Meisterschaft wieder dabei sind. DTM ist mega stark, das sind sicher die besten GT3, GT-Fahrer auf der Welt hier am Start. Ich glaube, wir können ganz viele Fahrer mit auf die Rechnung packen, die ja wahrscheinlich hier in Hockenheim um den Titel kämpfen werden. So unterschiedlich die Fahrer als Typen sind, so eint sie ein Ziel. Sie alle wollen ihn schlagen, Thomas Preining. Doch der Champion ist heiß auf die Titelverteidigung. Der Titel letztes Jahr hat definitiv Hunger auf mehr gemacht. Es ist das beste, beste Gefühl, das ich bis jetzt erleben durfte. Von dem her werden wir alles dran setzen, um, um das wieder zu schaffen. In gut zwei Wochen geht es in Oschers Leben um die ersten Meisterschaftspunkte dieser ganz besonderen Saison, der 40. Jubiläumssaison der DTM. Mein erstes Jahr war 2002 im Vorprogramm der DTM, seitdem bin ich dabei und natürlich drei Titel in den 40 Jahren äh, eingefahren. Von dem her ja, bin, ich, bin ich stolz, ein kleiner Teil der DTM-Geschichte zu sein. Ich versuche jetzt seit einigen Jahren den dritten Titel hinterherzufahren ähm, und den noch so einzupacken. Daher wäre es natürlich schön, wenn es im Jubiläumsjahr klappt. Doch egal, wer von ihnen Champion wird, Fakt ist, in dieser Saison gibt es definitiv etwas zu feiern. Happy Birthday, DTM. So we just heard from Thomas Prining, who of course was a uh, maiden champion last season, of course in his uh, second attempt. We've got Tim Yarschel, who in a Porsche as well, looking to become a DTM Esports champion. Uh, and right now still leaves the championship coming into this race by just over 30 points. We've got ourselves a little warm up here, then we've got qualifying. So qualifying is a little bit shorter for this race, eight minutes long. And then we have a 30 minute timed race. Uh, there's Moritz Lohner at the background uh, as well. So Moritz was in race number one. He's parked up here for race number two. Um, but yeah, it's a, sh a little bit longer race here. They've got a pit stop window though, Connery. So talk us through a little bit about what this pit stop window uh, has, well, the effect it's had so far on the season uh, and what effect it could potentially have today in this one. 
So just to go over it for someone who's uh, new to this series, these drivers will get themselves that mandatory pit stop. They have to take tyres, okay? So they can't just forget about the tyres, try and get a shorter stop. They have to um, take tyres. Um, with regards to its effect on the, the majority of this season, we, we've seen it make the difference in maybe one, maybe two positions um, uh, in some cases, depending on exactly when uh, people decide to come in. Because, of course, you come in early, try and get that undercut, try and get um, some, uh, some better track position for yourself. Um, we've seen uh, that used to some success, uh, especially at the Saxon ring, um, where some drivers perhaps potentially were a little bit stuck in the mid pack, came down in early and actually were able to, to leapfrog a, a couple of positions on those that stayed out just that little bit longer. Um, uh, but uh, at least as far as the Red Bull ring, well, I think I think it remains to be seen. This pit stop window can typically be quite wise, and due to the amount of the uh, well, the, how quick the laps here, um, well, the laps are here at the Red Bull ring. It gives us a, a lot of opportunity and a big wide window in terms of laps when these guys will come down in. So it's going to be an interesting one, uh, that's for sure. And I mean, it's just another tool that Redline and Co can use to try and disrupt Yashil's race a little bit. Yeah, 100%. It is as simple as that. I, I think clear air is going to be the biggest factor in this one today. Yeah, and a bit of clear air and just sort of just figuring stuff out all on your own. Let's go on board then with Julian Kunzer for a lap. Let's go in the cockpit cam, shall we? Uh, and check out a lap of the Red Bull Ring. Through turn number one, we will come. Uh, you can run out nice and wide through the exit of turn number one. It doesn't matter what racing game it is. Uh, around the Red Bull Ring, you can kind of run wide uh, around most corners and get away with it to a certain extent. You run through the made-up turn number two. We now come up the hill towards Remus for the first time in this qualifying session. Not grabbing all of the curve that you would expect there from Julian Kunzer. Run a little bit wide. Now we've got the long run down towards Schloss Gold once again. Uh, so it's blind now. You can't see the entry to the corner until you go over this little crest. And you're braking just as you see the apex. So braking a little bit late there as Kunzer slides the car. That's the, it looks cool, but unfortunately it's not that quick. And now we're running into Rauch. It's the most technical part of the circuit. So, so easy to run off into the gravel on the exit. Again, just uh, trying to minimize the slide on entry and, of course, on exit. So I don't want to light up those rears and, uh, and ultimately lose time by going sideways. Now we're coming through the Worth curve on the exit now through turn number six. Down towards Rint. It's a double right hand. And now it's a Rint and Red Bull mobile curve using the curving on entry to open up the right hand. You can run out a little bit wide here, but nothing too crazy using the raised blue and white curbing there to just keep traction as we now run around the final corner, we run up towards the lines, Julian Kunter for his first time in this session. Where's he gonna put himself? He's gonna put himself into the E12. But as a lap of the Red Bull Ring, uh, one of my favorite circuits I've ever been to actually. Uh, I had the pleasure of commentating there last year and it is just like in the middle of the sound of music. You honestly feel like you're gonna just break into song at any moment. There are just mountains all around you. It is a very unique part of the world. I've only had the pleasure of going through um, uh, this sort of area um, uh, on a coach, because <laughs> um, uh, you know it was it was it was on the way on a school trip. But um, uh, but yeah, it's uh, it is incredibly. Uh, picturesque around these parts and you know you, you look in any direction and it could be a postcard right it's um it, it's yeah. fantastic stuff it was the same when we uh um when we went to switzerland um it, again anywhere you look around there it was it was just absolutely beautiful and and and, the, and it's great scenery to to set the stage for our second to last uh, event meeting of the season as we saw Wisniewski head his way across the line p10 for now that's a decent banker lap to put in now he's going to go chasing for that pole position now in the in the, in the final four and a half minutes. Yeah, very unlike Nicodem though. Nicodem normally puts an absolute flyer in for his uh, banker time. So to see him down in P11 is uh, quite odd. As Jeffrey Rietveld does go to P4, does he stay there? Yes, he does. Okay, so that issue seems to have figured itself out. And uh, more importantly, he is between Kevin Siggy and Tim Yashul, I think with the issues that, uh, that Jeffrey's had in the previous race, by the way championships over um so right now it's you know him and enzo benito between those two realistically now to try and scupper the chances of tim yashu and help kevin siggy go and take this championship uh marcel shinshik goes up to p1 leonard kripner is in p3 so leonard kripner 
um, who has his best performance so far this season was the, the last race he was in actually prior to this weekend. It was a P7. Uh, so yeah, he's getting faster across this whole season. He's had a six. He's had uh, sorry, uh, Leonard Kripen has had an uh, eight three times in a P7 once uh, mixed in with a lot of misfortune. Uh, but right now finds himself in a top three. So that is a very nice performance. And that is exactly what Marcel Shinshik needs. He needs one of his boys up there. And right now he has got that. So not Marcel Shinshik. Tim Yarshall needs one of his boys up there. Uh, and he's got it right now. Yeah, absolutely. Fantastic stuff indeed. As we see, Enzo Benito coming out of the final corner now. He's on a decent lap. Here is Benito. Does it get him close to pole position? Let's see as he heads his way across the line. Oh. It's a good improvement. It's a P2 for the Italian right next to Marcel Cincic, but we've got a couple of drivers on laps at the moment. You can see how much purple is on the timing screen at the moment. This can still all change. Yeah, it certainly can. So right now, Tim Yarshall under a bit of pressure, Wisniewski. as is Nikodem Wisniewski. Wisniewski's only in P20. Around the final couple of corners, he will go, though, and he is up on everybody right now, down towards the final corner for... Uh, well, sorry, we're on board with Brzezinski. So Brzezinski uh, maybe about to break everybody's hearts as he comes down towards the start-finish line. He cuts that timing line, and where does he position himself? But well, it's only P9. What about Wisniewski? Where is Wisniewski? He is struggling here. Well, as I say that, he goes up to a top five. So fifth position for Wisniewski, but that is another driver ahead of Tim Yarshall. So for the first time, I would say, over the, cross, the course of this whole season, Tim Yarshall under some genuine pressure. Where is Yarshall? Well, he's absolutely flying here. Every time he's had a question asked of him, he has had the answer. He's now down to P10 as Fiducci moves his way up. And right now, if he is going to go and not have a quick lap here, he would only have one more opportunity to do so. But this looks good. This looks very good indeed. Round that final corner. And Tim Yarshall, the current championship leader, maybe the champion elect, comes across the line. Is he going to be good enough to move right up the order? Oh, it's not just good enough to move up the order. He is the top of the order. Tim Yarshall proving that he has got the minerals to be our champion. Three races out, takes a pole position under the most extreme scrutiny he has been in so far. By nine hundredths of a second over Chinchik as well as Enzo Benito, not able to complete that lap there. Still P3, Kripner faster through sector one than what Yarshell was able to put up. So maybe there is some Falcon support on its way towards the top of the order for Tim Yarshell. Let's see what the second sector is like here for Kripner. If it's good, it's decent. Uh, so might be on for a bit of an improvement here. He only needs to improve by, what, two hundredths of a second, and he gets himself up into third place. But I think he just invalidated his lap. Yeah, that is session over then for Leonard Kripner, but that is a good performance, and that is a, a massive positive for Tim Yarshall, the fact that he's ahead of Wisniewski. Wisniewski is the closest for the championship with Tim Yarshall. So again, I don't think Yarshall's going to be overly worried about Kevin Siggy. Uh, unless Siggy wins the next three races, I, I genuinely believe it is uh, almost impossible for him to win it now. I think Yashul only really has to worry about Wisniewski. Uh, and right now, the perfect uh, sort of recipe is forming because his teammate has, has turned up. He's gone, do you know what? Three races to go. I'm going to help you out here. I am going to be your wingman, uh, Mr. Yashul. Uh, and ultimately, finds himself then in that fifth position. Kevin Siggy may be about to find a bit more time. I think he's, uh, well, about a, a thousandth of a second up on his time previously. Uh, we're heading then through the final corner. Currently P5 in that order. And as we go across the line, no, he's going to back out that lap there. Tim Yarshall has not only got pole position, but that will be the pole position award winner for the season. No one can overturn that deficit. So congratulations to Tim Yarshall. The first of maybe a couple of accolades this season, it will be the pole position award. So that will be an Asher steering wheel going his way. Incredible performance from Tim Yarshall. Pulls that qualifying performance out of the bag when he needed it most. Of course, you know, it wasn't an ideal time, at least compared to where we're used to seeing him in the qualifying session for the first race. But in this second qualifying session, uh, he definitely stepped up to the plate like we know he, he can do. Every time he's looked a little bit shaky over the course of this season, he's had something there to try to respond. However, it is Marcel Cinjic that's also on the front row here. We know how aggressive, we know how in your face Marcel Cinjic can be, especially when push comes to shove. Yes, he's not going to be take, uh, a, a contender in the championship, but I don't think that will stop him. Right, second race at the Red Bull Ring. Ladies and gentlemen, cars, I'm watching on Twitch. I think Connery's got YouTube covered. Let me know how you're doing 
around the world. Let me know where you're watching from as well, uh, and we will try and give you a shout out. I'm going to head to the race room Twitch uh, right now as well. Um, there we go, race room racing experience. So I'm going to head over to there. Uh, and if you are in the chat, get yourselves involved, say hello, and let me know where you are watching from. Uh, so we have got a formation app, the first time ever in a pro series on race room where we've had a safety car. Of course, there's a partnership with DTM and Cupra for the last few years. And it's nice to see that we are indeed able to have the same exclusivity in sim racing. So thanks to Cupra for getting themselves involved. And thanks to Race Room for bringing it to a reality. Right, front row, it is, well, the front row plus one, it is Porsche City at the sharp end today. Uh, are we going to see that uh, dominate for the entirety of this race? Maybe. But there is a pit window, Connery. That might prove to be what wins this race. Absolutely. It's just that the extra little element to work with, uh, isn't it? It's, um, you, you know, you can maybe make a big call in terms of that. Hope you get lucky. You know, try and time it right. Come out in a bit of clear air where you can just run on your own, especially if you feel like you've been blocked over the um, course of the race. Uh, this new ski out into the grass. Got me a little bit concerned there, but uh, returns back to the racing surface. This isn't Spa 2021, is it? What's going on? <laughs> Wrong platform. Okay, my bad. <laughs> but um, but uh, uh, yeah, where was? It? Oh, pit stops. There we go. Um, yes, it, it hasn't been an absolutely huge factor over the course of this season so far. But I imagine there's a first time for everything, right? No, absolutely. Couldn't agree more. Uh, you can see there a lot of work being put in to the inputs for Nikodem Wisniewski currently in that second position. Tim Yarshall can directly see his championship rival right behind him. And uh, sorry, Nikodem must have got to P2 right at the last ditch of qualifying so I don't remember him yeah. being there and that was merely a minute and a half ago so yeah, yeah I must get crazy Nick and always gives you did pull one out of the bag uh, and, and really has uh, thrown the cat amongst the pitch if you get ahead of Tim Yarshall here he's going to make next week so so interesting the only unfortunate thing for him is his nearest teammate is P14 so Nick and going to have to do this on his own uh, very much like Tim has had to do through the entirety of this season so here are your two title protagonists leader of the championship tim yarshall in second spot it is nikodem wisniewski in that g2 livery car with the red bull on the side it's between those two as we head to start race number two the feature race with a pit window a pit stop where they have to change all four tires in this one 30 minutes long we're about to go green light racing it is race 10 round five of the dtm esports pro series 2024, and they're almost touching as we're waiting those lights to go green. We are green light racing here, and it's not a good start from either of the front two. And I tell you what, look at this from Marcel Shinshik. Shinshik's going to make it three, maybe four wide. And also there's a red line car getting involved. That's Enzo Benito. Benito runs wide and maybe looking to put a bit of pressure on Tim Yarshul. But that is given the opportunity for Nikodem Wisniewski to get into the lead of this race and well. We asked the question, could Kevin Siggy, Jeffrey Reaper, and Nikodem Wisniewski keep this championship alive into next week? Well, Nikodem Wisniewski right now is staring down on the barrel of a double win. And well, not just keeping it alive, but with a genuine chance of winning the championship next week at the Hockenheim ring. Exactly what Wisniewski needed. And in fact, it's not over here for Temi Arshall because he's having to try and defend. Here comes Shinjik around the outside, down in towards turn number four, trying to get that over, like trying to get the power off the corner. It's so difficult to hang it around the outside there because the right-handers feel like they never end and you can't maintain uh, that little overlap on the way in towards the left. So he's going to have to give it up for now. Yarshall, well, much more safer than he was about 20 seconds ago, but uh, not the ideal start whatsoever from your championship leader. Of course, in behind, they had a big old disagreement in terms of positions there as well. Jeffrey Rietfeld from, uh, of course, you know, after having his issue in the qualifying of race one and, and the transition from qualifying into the server didn't quite line up with his expectations. Um, we will have to see what the investigation of that technical issue is. Either way, new race for Jeffrey Rietfeld, P7. Yeah, he's doing okay here, isn't he? But he would love to be a little bit further up. Again, that, that technical issue that he's had has pretty much rendered his chances of winning this championship uh, done and dusty, considering that the two title uh, challengers at the sharp end are P1 and P2. So it's almost impossible here. Timmy Arshall taking the fastest lap on lap number two. Are we about to see a move, though, from Kevin Siggy? Kevin Siggy 
uh, makes a, a little look around the outside of Leonard Krippner. Krippner is going to make this difficult. That is an absolute fact here. Uh, how difficult is he going to make it? Well, I tell you what, I think he was a little bit too kind there. I'm expecting the Falcon Sim Racing car to Lewis Hamilton, Nico Rosberg his way through that corner. But he didn't. He was very, very polite. Kevin Siggy will be very happy with that. As we head then down towards Schloss Gold, Kevin Siggy's just about got that nose up ahead. Are we going to see a bit of dooring action here? Or oh, a little bit, a little bit more uh, aggressive there, I would say, but nothing too crazy. Uh, and Tim Yarshaw, if you watch his replay back, if you're going, Leonard, what are you getting up to there? Surely you could have made that a bit more difficult, but ultimately he's going to run wide. Kevin Singh going to have a little bit of contact between him. If we come through the double left-hander, I think by the time we get through the exit, it will be Kevin Singh's corner. Although, no, Leonard Kripner is still going to keep it in. Now, this is the teammate that Tim Yashul has needed. He has needed someone to slow the pack down and cost people time who are running for the championship, and he's absolutely doing that right now. He's making that Porsche as wide as he possibly can, and the red line drivers can do nothing about it. Oh, this is uh, this is a little bit of revenge from Falcon. I get the, I get the feeling Krippner feeling uh, hard done by. I mean, he wasn't directly involved with the Arshall situation in race number one, but he's giving payback all the same and keeping uh, those red line drivers behind him as best as he can. And you can see the rift that has developed between Krippner and uh, Benito a little bit further down the road. Here comes Kevin Siggy once again, making a move on the brakes on the outside here in towards turn three. Audi versus Porsche, an absolute classic as you see Siggy trying to get the uh, nose in underneath, but is unsuccessful. Yeah, and again, you say it's payback. It is exactly what the red line drivers would expect. They did this to Tim. And now, Leonard Krippner is just playing the team game perfectly well. It is a, uh, a, a red line sandwich between the Falcon Sim Racing bits of bread, as it stands. And once again, Kevin Siggy cannot get that job done. And this brings the pit window into question now. If you had a red line cars, do you just come in early to try and get out of this? Because right now, the, the championship's just slipping between your fingers. Ooh. Kevin uh, runs out wide. He's trying to go around the outside of Krippner. Krippner doing a sensational job here for his team. This is brilliant from him. He's gone from not doing enough for me to doing the best job ever in the space of about half a lap. Fair play. Yeah, I mean, the red line cars won't be able to dive down pit lane this time. It opens in 27 seconds. So it'll have to be the next lap for them. If they're in the same position at the end of the next lap, they're going to come in. Absolutely 100% guaranteed. They cannot afford to get caught up behind Krippner here. No, I completely agree with you there. It's almost now become uh, two races. So the front group have managed to get away. There's 1.8 seconds separating the top four. And then you've got Krippner, who is the lead car of maybe the slowest pack in history of GT racing around here. He has slowed them down so, so much. One there's just no seconds. gap to work with. Ridiculous stuff. Again, it is perfectly done. We've seen, you know, how to make an overtake using your teammate. And now we're seeing how to bring a gap for your teammate at the front of this race. Kevin Siggy goes really deep then through Remus. He does have the overlap on the outside line, but once again, Krippner positions his car perfectly well. He's now going to get across the bonnet of Kevin Siggy. I don't think Kevin's got the overlap at all, although Krippner decides, you know what, I'm just going to keep holding this inside line. This is going to hemorrhage more time for that red line car. Can Kevin keep the overlap? Can he keep the inside line? As they head down towards Rauch, he can't. Krippner has once again scuppered Kevin Siggy, although I think the send here essentially is going to get that job done but it's a six and a half second gap now between these and the race leader job done Leonard Gripper take a bow for your team that is beautifully done still going to maintain an overlap here it's not quite done just yet and how do they negotiate coming down on towards the pit lane when they're side by side like this if any of them decide to do so as there we go I think fan out three wide diving down the inside was Jeffrey Rietfeld there it's all a bit chaotic back here now it's the two Falcon cars that are going wheel to wheel uh, with each other Whoa, a big amount of confusion there as we're seeing a couple of cars down on towards the pit lane Wisniewski's come down here yeah he absolutely has so Wisniewski has come into the pits from the lead of the race so that is a very interesting decision. I guess he does come out with clear air is he, because he will be the lead car. Mm -hmm. But yeah, clear air seems to be the, uh, the the aim of the game, which to be fair does back up what I said earlier on. I'm right twice in the season, crazy. Uh, but yeah, Nikolin Wisniewski has decided to come in. I just, no, I just think you've got too much to lose by making that kind of decision. You see Krippner, by the way, trying to send it um, there. <laughs> oh, was that, sorry, that's Lucas Muller now, isn't it? Lucas Muller is the lead car now of the Falcon Sim Racing team trying to get ahead of the number 69. Nice of Jeffrey Rietveld. Side by side action, there's uh, Dominic Flyer and Leonard Krippner. Uh, but the job done right now. He's got that seven second gap and just 
considering how close these drivers are in terms of pace. Seven seconds in a 30 minute race. That is just exceptionally well done there. Do you know what? If Tim Yashu goes ahead and wins this race, Leonard Kripner for me gets driver of the day. Yeah, I, I think so too. Um, the lap time deltas were ridiculous throughout the entire sequence. It was 1.5 to two seconds a lap slower than your top three cars. That's the pace that Kripner was running to keep everyone behind. Wow. Yeah, just absolutely outstanding, isn't it? Really is. And to the pitch then, Fort Leonard Kripner, he's probably got no tyres left to how he was driving. Um, I've just seen in the chat there, Karma. Yeah, absolutely. Red lines that work together perfectly well to get an overtake from Kevin Siggy earlier on. It was, again, executing the team game perfectly. And ultimately, we've just seen exactly the same there from the Falcon Sim Racing team. So it's, um, it's, it's nice. I like it. I think it's spicy. It's great. It creates uh, storylines for us. It creates, you know, maybe a, a, a bit of argy-bargy between teams. I absolutely love it there. Nikola Wisniewski then. Marcel Shinchik just in behind. I think Shinchik may have gained a little bit here, actually. Um, but yeah, he finds himself in that P3 as we go across the start-finish line. So yeah, Wisniewski with all that clear air in front of him, all that clear track, hoping to try and uh, close that imaginary gap, um, or, or extend, sorry, that imaginary gap to Tim Yarshall. He won't find out where Yarshall is until Yarshall pits. So what does Yarshall do now, Connery? Does he decide, you know what, I've got to wait until the end here? Or can he, can he afford to do that? Can he afford to let other drivers get onto, you know, the faster tire uh, with the fresh rubber? It's not a big difference, but it will be a big enough difference. You know, and just try and, you know, even if he does come out behind Nick and Wisniewski, or does he stay out longer and just make sure that he's really quick at the end of this race and maybe then looks to attack. Because overtaking, you know, it's not, it's been an amazing championship, but overtaking has not been at its premium this season. Track position has always been king. Yeah, it has. And, well, Yashel staying out uh, another lap longer. So this is interesting. This is the first time we've seen a massive difference in terms of the strategy uh, for, uh, for in, directly in between top runners. Um, so it's a very interesting call there. Uh, for Yasha. We have Emre Chian down on towards the pit lane. Same with uh, Jack Keithley as well, as uh, we wait for everything to sort itself out here. But Wisniewski, uh, he's, he's running in clear air now, and we know what his clear air pace is like. We know what his qualifying pace is like. It, it is not too shabby indeed. So when he has this clear track in front of him and no pressure whatsoever, he's, he's going to be at his best. But let's see what the lap time is for him coming across the line here, because the last lap wasn't out lap, but 135.1. Uh, let's see what this lap is. So he comes across the line now. 128.4, uh, 5.3. That is uh, just a, a couple of hundredths of a second faster on that last lap than what Yashel was able to do. Look how close Enzo Benito is. Considering he was behind... Um, hold on. What, he, was he... Yeah, he was behind Kripner, right? Or was Enzo ahead? No, Enzo was in the lead group, wasn't he? He was in the lead four. Just trying to fit... Oh. Yeah, he was definitely wide at one point, they? <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. Um, yeah, I was just trying to think: was he was he one of the drivers being held up? It's Jeffrey and Kevin that were being held up by um, Leonard Kripner, so that's why Enzo's close up there. Say he's just closed in this almost a six-second gap um, that Leonard Kripner had made. If, if that was the case, but it's uh, it is not the case. There is Jeffrey. He leads the next group of cars. We've got Gian Marco Fiducci, of course, uh, just in behind him. Leon Rudinger. Um, who has pit again? You can see next to their name, we've got the number one in the green circle. As Yuyovsky decides to come into the pits now, uh, this time around, we're on board then with Nikola Wisniewski. We think he's got the net lead of this race between him and Tim Yarshall. Uh, Kevin Siggy, by the way, is closing that gap to Tim Yarshall massively, uh, but they're both on exactly the same strategy, so it becomes very, very difficult for him to make the move. But he was seven seconds behind. Uh, but once everyone decided to pit around him, that clear track, he's nearly gained a second and a half. So very impressive stuff. But again, Leonard Kripner in, in, in a race that's so close like this, seven seconds is an absolute age. It's just impossible to overturn that deficit. It's a brilliant job by the Falcon Sim Racing team. And that might be, and I'm not trying to take anything away from Tim Yarshall. Tim Yarshall has been the outstanding driver. He's done everything in this championship and he deserves it, all of the credit on his own. He deserves the flowers. But ultimately, that move from, uh, from Leonard Kripner, that couple of laps from Leonard Kripner might be the final nail in everyone else's coffin that does ultimately give Tim Yarshall the DTM Esports Pro Series Championship 2024. It could be, but we have one more event to go after this one. <laughs> we still have two races. Yeah. I wouldn't, I wouldn't Wisniewski, count it out. And Wisniewski winning race number one and, and, and potentially yeah. he's in the lead of this race as well. 
there is every reason to suggest that um, that Nicodem is going to make a massive fight of this. So you're right, it's not all done and dusted, uh, but you know it's, it would be you know rude not to say how much hard work Tim Yash should have put in. His consistency has been you know above and beyond everybody else's. His, his worst result this season is a fifth. He's had a fourth as well. Every other race has been a podium performance. So you know no one else is anywhere near that in terms of their clear record. Absolutely. Um, it, it's, been, it's been great so far. I'm keeping, uh, again, I'm keeping an eye on these lap times. Yarshella won 28.445 last time. Nikodem Fisniewski, uh, uh, so that was actually the fastest lap of, uh, uh, no, not the race, but it was, it was Tim Yarshella's fastest personal best, um, I suppose. Right. Um, it, and it was just a couple of hundredths a second faster on Fisniewski, so... Uh, Fresh tyre is not that valuable at the moment. Of course, you have to take a little bit of extra fuel while you take the tyres, which cancels that out, I suppose. Yeah, so this is good news for Wisniewski, though, for later in this race, knowing that, it, you know, even though he's coming early, it, it means that he's not going to be suffering crazily later on in the stint. Um, but yeah, Tim Yarshall, I would imagine, comes in this time round. He will be splitting this 50-50. It makes sense to do so. Uh, I believe he's going to come out in still. Oh, it's going to be tight. It's going to be so tight, actually. I think he's going to come out in second position. Um, but it remains to be seen. He comes around then the second to last corner and he decides to dive in. Let's stay on board then with Tim Yarshul. Or, or maybe actually we should look at Nikodem Wisniewski. That is the battle is between those two. Yarshul is going to stop uh, and we are coming up towards route for Nikodem Wisniewski. So he has got himself four corners to negotiate after this one. Uh, and then it will become all about him versus Tim Yashu on the merge on the exit of the pits. Remember, they've got to change all four tyres. So heading towards the final two right-handers, Nikodem Wisniewski. He is very close to ending this lap. Tim Yashu yet to get moving by the looks of things. So he's still in his pit stall. Two corners to go. And Wisniewski will just be thinking this is the longest lap time ever. Needs to get ahead, I think, to really make a run at this championship. Where is Yashul? Is Yashul getting going yet? Across the start-finish line, we are going to go. Well, he is getting going, uh, and it is very quickly going to get up to speed. He's got the inside line as we come through turn number one, of course, with that pit exit. And wow, Nikodem Wisniewski is going to get him, but does anybody else get him? No, he does not. So Tim Yashul does come out into P2. Nikodem Wisniewski, like I said at the start of this race, staring down the barrel at a pair of P1s today and not just taking it to a final round next week at the Hockenheim Ring with a genuine chance of being a champion. Tim Yarshall won't be panicking right now. He will still have a very healthy lead. He'll have, a, I think, about a 35, 36 point lead going into next week. So, you know, of course, it's still a very, very hard thing to overturn. But Nikodem Wisniewski is doing everything in his power right now to make sure that we have a rumble at Hockenheim Ring. Yeah, he is. He really, really is. What a performance in the last couple of rounds of the season, eh, for uh, Wisniewski. Of course, he showed the pace early on in the season as well. It just wasn't the right set of circumstances. Got caught up in instants here and there. Has unfortunately dropped him so many points that he's still not that close in the championship. He could have been so much closer at this stage um, if he was able to get to the uh, checkered flag unscathed in some of those early events. But the recovery has been absolutely fantastic here for Wisniewski. It still might not be enough, depending on how that final event goes, I acknowledge. Um, but you, you do have to respect the, uh, respect the tenacity to be able to, to bounce back from, uh, from a poor couple of rounds at the start. Yeah, and just to clarify the results of the season, Tim Yash has had a second, a first, a fourth, a second, a fifth, a third, a first, a second, and today it's a fourth and a second as it stands. Uh, Nikodem Wisniewski has gone fourth, DNF, that hurts. Yeah. A first, a third, 22nd, that hurts. A first, a third, a first, a first, and it looks like it might be another first. So he's won, by the time we come up towards the end of this race, if he does indeed win this, he would have won four out of the last five races, and the one he didn't win, he was P3. Massive, yeah. massive, uh, massive performance from Nikodem Wisniewski and, uh, you know, really showing why he is one of the best in race in the world and showing actually why G2 have gone out there and invested in someone with that kind of talent. It's just a big shame about the DNF for the P20, right? You know, it's, it's you know, what this championship could be looking completely different right now um, if he was able to get to the end of those races unscathed. Um, but, you know, it's uh, we, we can think about it as a fantasy. It's not our reality, though. 
um, as uh, we see a couple more drivers come down onto pit lane as uh, Isaac Price and Lucas Muller have decided that now is a pretty good time to pit. Uh, to pit. Uh, but inside the final 10 minutes of this race now, Luke, of course, Yashel, after uh, keeping himself out there for uh, a couple of laps after that first stint, he'll have a slightly fresher tire to the end of this race now than Wisniewski. And, well, he could put them to good use potentially because he's still on the edge of the slipstream here. Uh, so he will be feeling the effects. And uh, I don't count out a Yashel race win just yet, although he is sort of having to focus behind as well because Chinchik's not too far away. Yeah, that would be some statement, wouldn't it? You know, it doesn't need to make the overtake, but have a healthy lead going into the final round here. I'm not sure we had to defend that. So again, Tim, maybe, maybe he's inexperienced popping out a little bit here, uh, but what a statement it would be if he has a chance to overtake the, the one driver that can, you know, beat him in the DTM Esports Pro Series 2024 uh, with two races to go. So not only have a healthy lead, but let him know, well, if it comes down to it, I can absolutely overtake you. You know, could the same be said for Nikita Wisniewski? Has he managed to do that during his championship? No, he hasn't. Yashu has been just ridiculously good. Uh, the only time it's really been overtaken was where it redlined the last race, where it took another driver to box him in and ultimately help his team out, although he runs a little bit wider on the exit route in towards the Worth curve. Um, and, but yeah, Nikita Wisniewski isn't under too much pressure right now. Nine minutes to go, 1.3 second gap in, on this sim. That's a big gap. That's a very difficult gap to overturn. And actually, you might see here Marcel Shinchik is under a little bit of pressure from Enzo Benito. Can Enzo potentially find one more spot and try and help his team once again and get ahead of Yarshal? Is there a world here, Connery, where Enzo could get ahead of Yarshal and maybe do the same again? Um, it'll be more, much more difficult, that's for sure, um, especially given the, 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 the tire discrepancy uh, between the two. But if it's that, that's what he has to do, then uh, Benito is one of those that is very capable at it. I mean, same with Chinchik as well, uh, to be honest here. So y Yashal definitely isn't safe still uh, at this stage. Still has a couple of things to be concerned about. If he loses the position to Chinchik, well, of course, it just hands more points in the silver platter to Wisniewski to make sure that gap is as small as possible coming into our finale at the Hockenheim ring. If he then loses the spot to Enzo Benito as well, yeah, it starts getting a little concerning then. Yeah, you can uh, you can definitely guarantee, guys, that next week I will be doing mathematics throughout the whole of the broadcast <laughs> to definitely let you know how it is going live. Uh, maybe we'll have someone help us out with that as well, but we will be able to tell you the full story next time around. But as it stands, Nikolai Wisniewski is going to be a two-time winner today, uh, meaning that he has managed to get the most wins out of everybody uh, so far this season. He would have five in total, and that would be three more than anybody else this season. So very impressive stuff for Nikolai Wisniewski. It would definitely close the gap on to Tim Yashu. It wouldn't be a significant amount if Tim Yashu was only fourth, and... It's only a four-point difference between P1 and P2 in this round. So I think it will be the difference of about 12 points. I think we're going to be at sort of 31, 32 points difference heading into next week. So Tim Yarsha will still have a massive healthy uh, advantage heading into that and, you know, almost one hand on that trophy. But Nikodem Wisniewski has made it interesting. After having a DNF and a P22 this season, he has not let that deter him. and He's giving it absolutely everything to make sure that he is in with a chance heading into the final week. And I can only tip my hat to that sort of mentality. Very, very nice stuff indeed. Not giving up, getting those Ws, at least in the races. And that's all he needs to do. Um, the rest like of John it Cena. is kind of out of his hands. Just like John Cena, never give up. Mm. Hustle, loyalty, and respect. That's where you were going, Connery, wasn't it? That was exactly where you were going with that. I was about to hear some trumpets, but uh, I don't think we, we, <laughs> we, we summoned... Um, Da, 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 da. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> Nikodem Wisniewski is the John Cena of DTM Esports. There you go. You've heard it here first, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. And uh, some say you can't see him, but I can. He's just right a little bit further up the road. Yeah, absolutely. He's, uh, he's, he's got, what, 1.4 seconds uh, over Tim Yashal at the moment in, in a very, very comfortable spot. Um, it, nice to see. Nice to see that uh, G2 Porsche uh, doing so well. Um, but of course, this still isn't over yet. Still six minutes left to go here in this one. Of course, the, the, the gaps have kind of stagnated a little bit uh, in and amongst these top couple of positions. It will give us an opportunity, actually, to check in about what's going, uh, going on uh, elsewhere. Let's see if uh, some drivers that perhaps not having the best of days here today, one of them 
uh, one of our previous champions, of course, uh, Moritz Lutner. Um, he's currently on the back of a pretty long train in the mid back here at the moment, so maybe a, a bit of entertainment for him at the end of this race here to see if he can press on forwards. But it's always been uh, a bit of a struggle for those BMWs to make any sorts of progress in the vast majority of the races that we've had so far. I mean, uh, we had uh, someone in our in the, in the race room YouTube chat mention that there were like uh, two of the five rounds where BMWs were um, were decent, but then. Of course, you know, the rest of the races, they've they kind of uh, fallen by the wayside. So, um, yeah, it has been very, very difficult for them. Although, uh, Morris Lona down the inside and uh, looking to uh, get that pass done. And does so over the under. Yeah, and um, this is the state of sim racing we're in right now. The BOP is a, is a big conversation because they can't just choose what car they want now. Uh, the, the likes of Mouse, they have to choose the BMW because they're contracted with BMW. Is as serious as that now. Obviously, we've got Mercedes Esports in, uh, in within sim racing. They're not in this championship, but they would have to choose a Mercedes, for instance. So, like, yeah, there's um, there is massive uh, consequences to a, to a BOP, especially if you're on the the wrong end of it. But that is motorsport general. It can never be perfect because the cars are just so different. We're seeing a lovely little battle here with Florian Hasser looking to try and get involved with Ralph Peringer. We head down towards the final couple of points. Flash of the lights there from. Uh, Ralph Bringer, and uh, I don't know what he's flashing like, just to say hello to the car in front, Emery Chihan. I, I want to give a shout out to uh, Leon Rudinger, it's going to be a best performance, not only is he P8 right now, but he's got the fastest lap of the race. Leon uh, Rudinger's performances this season have been 22nd, a DNF did not start, a 22nd, 20th, 16th, 21st and 22nd. Pretty consistent, but just the wrong end of consistent, unfortunately for him, uh, but P8 right now and a fastest lap, it's a very nice performance to, uh, this week. Yeah, and Lowe's is down the inside of Fiducci there, but Fiducci uh, is able to cover it off. So Rudinger not done with, uh, not completely done with climbing up the order just yet. And again, uh, P7. By the time this race is done, not a lot of time left in this one, all things considered. But plenty of time to make a make a move. And uh, again, you know these these high paced BMWs, Fiducci and, and Rudinger, uh, really sort of outperforming their cars at the moment. Yeah, just a little bit. Uh, at this stage of the season, they put so much practice in. Um, a nice performance would make this very much worthwhile because it is so competitive out there. It's so difficult to get a result. There's no such thing as a freebie. Um, it really is hard work, pays off. It is as simple as that. You know, Wisniewski and Timmy have put that hard work in. That's why they are at the sharp end. But look at the gap between the front two. Uh, we have got ourselves, I think, still three laps to go. This is the third from last lap. Indeed it is. And they up across the line and, and in towards turn number one they come. Again, so important to try and maximize the run possible um, out of that first turn to carry the speed all the way down this straight to enable any sorts of opportunities uh, in towards turn three. But again, I don't think these guys are, are close enough to really be thinking about sending it here. Uh, they have to wait and maybe attempt another time. Although Chinche carried a good amount of speed through the corner, had a decent exit as well. So, making progress, and well, if he can threaten Tim Yarshall here at the very end of the uh, at the end of the race, I think there's going to be a, a check in the mail from G2 and Redline. Yes, I think there will be. Um, it's yeah, very very impressive stuff. Marcel Shinshik has just had a, a, one of those seasons to forget, really. Uh, all that time ago in round number one, can you remember who won the first race of the season, Connery? I can't remember. Oh, uh, oh, it was Marcel Shinshik. Shinshik yeah. Won the first race of this of the season, of the main season. He was P4 in his qualifying round to get through. Uh, this, this might be handy, by the way, for Nikola Wisniewski, if he could get Marcel Shinshik between. Well, as you've just mentioned, of course, sending that check from G2 to RHG and potentially uh, to Team Redline as well. But Timmy Arshall holds firm. And as was mentioned last week from Kevin Siggy himself, Tim Yash was very close to a qualifying ban, so can ill afford to get really involved if they do go side by side. Cannot be in a position where he squeezes someone off. Um, but yeah, back to Marcel Shinshik, who's currently in that top three. He was our first race winner. He got first and ninth position, and uh, heading into rounds number number three and four, races number three and four, round two, he was actually third in the championship. He's looking very, very strong indeed. Uh, but it just went wrong. As you see, almost a bit of touching there. They're all good. Um, since then, he's had 20th, 8th, 21st, 26th, 13th, 30th not being good. Are we about to see a move though down towards Schloss Gold? You can bet your bottom dollar that 
uh, Tim Yash was going to take that inside line, but is he going to run deep on the exit? He is a little bit, but ultimately we will have that inside line once again. And realistically now, Enzo Benito just needs to take advantage of any misdemeanors between the two of them. We've got 35 seconds left. I think we are going to cross the line one more time and have a 20th lap in this race. Nikodem Wisniewski is heading in towards that final chicane. It's going to be so tight. It is going to be so, so tight, actually. Is this the last lap? Or are we going to go for one more? Ooh. I think we're going to have one more lap here. Yeah, we are for 16 well, seconds and around. No. Well, there we go. So we're probably not then. Around then the second the last corner, around the last corner. We're about to come across the line. Are we about to see another race victory? Across the line then for Nikodem Wisniewski. And we do have one more lap remaining. So I am better than a computer, apparently, as we come through turn number one. No fist pumps there. And I got it by about half a second, Connery. <laughs> you, you, you were more accurate than my timing system. <laughs> because my timing stream was saying that that was the last lap. But we continue one more. Like you said, no celebration from uh, Vizdewski, who's actually leaning forward to try and see how much, uh, I imagine, trying to see how much time was left in one of his information boxes. Yeah, probably. Well, all he needs to know is it's one more tour around the Red Bull Ring and he's going to become a five-time winner in the GTM Esports. Three more than anybody. And that means he will uh, have, yeah, there's no one who can get anywhere near him in terms of the race victories in the season. He will have the most wins. It's as simple as that. So we're into the mid part of this circuit. We're heading through the Rouch Curve for the very final time. Double left-hander into the Work Curve as well. Or again, the very final time. It's a race lead for Nikodem Wisniewski. It is a second time of asking for him where he will answer that call and go, yep, I will absolutely take a race victory. Uh, pick up two for the week. And I'm just looking back here. Nobody has managed to get a double race win so far this season. The closest luck actually was last time out with Kim Yarshall getting a P1 and a P2 and round one and two where he got a second and a first. But it wasn't last time round for the last lap. It is this time round for the last lap. Across the line will go for Nikodem Wisniewski, the John Cena of the DTM Esports Championship. Apart from we can't see him. And well, he does take the race victory. You can tell how much it means to him. He's buzzing and he does take the championship into the final races of the season at the Hockenheim Ring next time round. Tim Yarshall does take P2, Mr. Consistent, striking once again. Marcel Shinjik back into the podium situation. Fair play to him. Enzo Benito is in fourth. Uh, he's had a pretty good day considering last week he had two qualifying fans and he wasn't very well. Uh, he still isn't very well, to be fair. Uh, finishes in fourth spot. Kevin Siggy finishes in fifth. And then the trio of red line cars is completed by Jeffrey Rietveld. We then got Fiducci, Rudinger, uh, twice because he's that good. Uh, he, he does deserve a shout out though. Best performance of the season for Leon Rudinger. P8 today and the fastest lap of the race, I believe. Isaac Price then is in ninth position. And then we've got Leonard Kripner, who probably uh, deserves driver of the day just because of what he did with the red line cars of Kevin Siggy and Jeffrey Rietveld. He slowed them down so much that he gained the front four seven seconds. Marcel Shinchik, uh, Nikita Wisniewski, Tim Yasha, and Enzo Benito gained seven seconds because of Kripna over three laps slowing down the pack. Team Red Line won from the first race of making an overtake on Tim Yasha using the team. Falcon Sim Racing won because he slowed them down for a significant amount of time in race two. It was beautiful to watch. Axel Vermeulen, P11, Dominic Glyer, P12, Lucas Muller, 13th, Brzezinski, 14th, Ottaviani, 15th, Carton in 16th, Chian, 17th, Banky, Yuyovsky, and Peringa are your top 20. Then we've got Moritz Lohner, Florian Hasser, Mitchell, Delorme, Payich, Gillison, Keithley, Neg, and Kunzer as your classified finishes. Werle is a DNF in P30. And then to round it out, it is Yuri Toman. So Yuri Toman, P31, but it is a DNF. Oh, breathe, Connery, breathe. What a round of races we've had there. And for the first time, we've had the teams working together. It's something that I think is maybe frowned upon within the drivers because they've genuinely have been really well behaved. And I'm not saying they've been poorly behaved today. I just think they've uh, the drivers have decided today, oh, we can actually affect how one of our drivers goes. Because the later you go in a championship, normally you've only got one driver, maybe two, that from each team that can potentially win the championship. So it makes sense for you to almost throw away the chances of one of them to help another driver. But Redline, in race number one, they boxed Tim Yarshall in. They gave Kevin Siggy the chance to run around the outside uh, and ultimately get himself into P2 in the race and, and demote Yarshall down into P4. But Leonard Krippner, with an unbelievable 
uh, set of circumstances because he just held them up for seven seconds. Seven seconds to gap from the top four down to the next pack of drivers because of Krippner making that Porsche as wide as possible for Falcon Sim Racing. So, yeah, really, really nice bits of teamwork we've seen used today. But once again, Tim Yarshall, absolutely incredible from him. Still managing to have top fives from every single round. But realistically, the best driver today was Nikodem Wisniewski. Two wins from two and genuinely has a chance now of becoming our champion next time out. It's a tough ask because Tim Yarshall is so far ahead. But he's done everything he possibly could today by winning two out of two. Yeah, perfect performance for Wisniewski. Absolutely perfect. Um, in terms of race pace, anyway, it's... Uh, um, uh, it was really uh, quite demonstrative of his pace over the course of this season. It's it's just those you know you're going to be looking back on those on that DNF and then on the the P20 plus and just thinking what could have been you know if you even finished top ten in those races you know uh, it, the the points gap would still be uh, much more manageable uh, than it is right now. But at the same time, you kind of do have to put those out of your minds now. This is the situation. This is the reality of things. Let's see what happens at Hockenheim Ring because, you know, one bad race from Yarshell and all of a sudden the whole thing's blown wide open. 100%. I couldn't agree more. Well, our track time's come to an end here in the eSports series uh, for round number five. But in the real series, for the 40th anniversary, DTM is back. And this week, they actually headed to the Hockenheim Ring for their first test session of the season. And we've got some highlights of how that went. Endlich ist es wieder richtig laut, denn die neue DTM-Saison ist gestartet. Auf dem Hockenheimring drehten die Fahrer bei den offiziellen Tests ihre ersten Runden. Die Vorfreude ist da, einfach weil es äh, so ein bisschen wie der erste Schultag ist. Äh, alle wieder zusammen, das erste Mal alle zusammen auf der Strecke. In der neuen DTM-Saison zu starten ist immer was ganz Besonderes. Man sieht die neuen äh, Beklebungen, Lackierungen, ganzen Teams, Fahrer, alles ist neu gemischt. Und das sind sie. 20 Fahrer der DTM-Saison 2024. Vertraute Gesichter treffen dabei auf frischen Wind. Zum allerersten Mal sind wir auch froh, dass die ersten 10 der letztjährigen Meisterschaft wieder dabei sind. DTM ist mega stark, das sind sicher die besten GT3, GT-Fahrer auf der Welt hier am Start. Ich glaube, wir können ganz viele Fahrer mit auf die Rechnung packen, die ja, wahrscheinlich hier in Hockenheim um den Titel kämpfen werden. So unterschiedlich die Fahrer als Typen sind, so eint sie ein Ziel. Sie alle wollen ihn schlagen, Thomas Preining. Doch der Champion ist heiß auf die Titelverteidigung. Der Titel letztes Jahr hat definitiv Hunger auf mehr gemacht. Das ist das beste, beste Gefühl, das ich bis jetzt erleben durfte. Von dem her werden wir alles dran setzen, um, um das wieder zu schaffen. In gut zwei Wochen geht es in Oschers Leben um die ersten Meisterschaftspunkte dieser ganz besonderen Saison, der 40. Jubiläumssaison der DTM. Mein erstes Jahr war 2002 im Vorprogramm der DTM, seitdem bin ich dabei und natürlich drei Titel in den 40 Jahren äh, eingefahren. Von dem her ja, bin, ich, bin ich stolz, ein kleiner Teil der DTM-Geschichte zu sein. Ich versuche jetzt seit einigen Jahren den dritten Titel hinterher zu fahren ähm, und den noch so einzupacken. Daher wäre es natürlich schön, wenn es im Jubiläumsjahr klappt. Doch egal, wer von ihnen Champion wird, Fakt ist, in dieser Saison gibt es definitiv etwas zu feiern. Happy Birthday, DTM. So, yes, they're back on track. The DTM cars for a 40th season are back and they will be kicking off at Oschersleben uh, not far from now. Right, let's check out then. The Pole Position Award, which has been won, it is done and dusted. No one can beat that Tim Yarshall. So as you can see there, uh, Morris Lohner had one pole position, then Tim Yarshall got himself, uh, well, he's got himself six. It's really as simple as that. Nikodem Wisniewski, he's got himself two. Uh, and then we've got Jeffrey Rietveld with one. So congratulations to Tim Yarshall on picking up the Pole Position Award. Absolutely outstanding from him. Uh, let's check out the Fastest Lap Award as well then, uh, which... We have got the graphic for and the fastest lap award today goes to Kevin Diggy for Team Redline. The lap time was a 128.081. Right, Connery, let's wrap this up. No one's here to talk to us, unfortunately, so we're going to just wrap it up. Uh, but let's, before we wrap up, have a look at the schedule because next week it is the finale. It is between two drivers. So next week, make sure that you are here. It will be at 7 p.m. Uh, CEST. It will be at 6 p.m. B 
EST. And if you're over in America, if it's the East Coast, that's five hours before UK. So that'd be 1 p.m. Uh, and if you are over on the West Coast, that will be 10 uh, a.m. So 1 p.m. and 10 a.m. for you over in America. But it comes down to this. Two drivers. It is between Tim Yasha, who leads the championship, and Nikodem Wisniewski. It is Falcon Sim Racing versus G2 Esports. Oh, from me, thank you very much. From Connery as well, thank you very much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed that. We'll catch you next time, where it's Falale time and maybe some fireworks on track.